28-year-old Richard Smart has a successful career as a hairdresser and a marriage to a loving partner. But behind this picture of domestic bliss lies a dark secret. Richard is addicted to meat. I just love meat, really, either on its own or with a white roll. For my lunch, I have it. For my dinner, I have it all the time. That is so nice. Since the age of three, he's eaten little else. Fruit and veg are strictly off limits. The thought of it just made me want to gag. I just want to throw up, spit it out. It would be horrible, really horrible. But Richard's meaty diet is starting to take its toll on his health. There is great evidence to show that diet increases the risk of colorectal cancer. Helping him to beat his addictions will be the job of our experts. Nutritionist Charlotte Watts will encourage Richard to get beyond gristle. There's a lot of strong flavors here. Oh. <coughs> while psychologist Felix Economakis gives Richard's food phobias the chop. When you put your mind to something, you will achieve it. In just four weeks, can they reverse a lifetime of dangerous eating habits? You OK? No, I just don't want to be here. I just need to do something about it. Richard Smart lives in Norfolk and has found lifelong love and marriage with 25-year-old Matt, who works in IT. They've been together for five years and live with Richard's parents while they build their ideal home next door. But their dream life could soon be shattered by Richard's all-consuming love affair. I love pork. I love the crackling with it. Love burgers. Steak's always good, one of my favourites. I love steak. Lamb's probably my... My very, very favourite thing. <laughs> Richard porks out on a pound and a half of meat a day and doesn't eat much else. I just love meat. I have it all the time for my lunch, dinner. I love the flavour of that. I love the way it feels in my mouth. It's just fantastic. And I could just eat nothing but that all day long, as long as it's on its own. Um, I wouldn't have it if there was any stuff with it, like herbs or spices or things. Richard's meaty diet is made worse by the fact that he can hardly bear to even touch fruit or veg. I, d I just kind of don't like them at all. It just makes me feel really tense and a bit worried. No, let's say it just feels really horrible. Look, at, I'm wiping my hand now. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I don't, no, don't like that at all. When he gets near foods that he doesn't like sometimes, it's, you can see the panic in his face. It's really, it's just so irrational. It's almost like it's going to attack him somehow. No. Oh. The only other thing Richard's prepared to swallow is chocolate, a staggering 25 bars of the stuff every week. It's a diet that's taking its toll. I've been getting migraines, I've never got any energy. You know, if I have a full night's sleep, I wake up the next morning, I could probably go back to sleep an hour later. I'm sure that's because of my diet. But when he does find the energy to go out, socialising with friends is near impossible because of Richard's obsessive food issues. Hello. We get instances where I'll, I'll invite Matt and Richard for a meal and uh, Matt will turn up and say Richard's not very well. I know, I know full well that Richard's not coming out because he won't be able to eat anything. Did you want to come through in the kitchen? I've, I've got some burgers you might be interested in. What could possibly be wrong with those? Black pepper, mace, oregano, cumin, garlic, bay, rosemary, thyme. Sorry. Right. So no, <laughs> really, is what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do, I, do, I do feel quite bad now. Conquering 25 years of freaky eating is not going to be easy. I have great hopes that Richard will succeed with this, but I really can't imagine it happening. The habits are so in ingrained into him. Much as he wants to, I think he's going to find it very hard to overcome it. He's definitely got worse over the, the time that I've known him. He's got moodier, um, bigger, just everything about him has got, has got worse, really. If this doesn't work, I don't know what the future is, really. Probably not a very long one. It's affecting every bit of my life. It's affecting how I feel in terms of my health. It affects my relationship with Matt. There's no part of my life that it doesn't cause problems with. I just really, really want to change.
It's day one of Richard's dietary makeover and he's been summoned to London for his first meeting with nutritionist Charlotte and psychologist Felix. He's desperate to begin the long road away from meat and towards healthier living. Hey. Hi there. Hello. I'm Charlotte. Hello, Hello Richard. Richard. Hi, Hi Richard. I'm Hi. Felix. Lovely Hi. to meet you. Well, we've got a lot of work to do with you. Firstly, we're going to show you something. So if you okay. want to come with us. Yep, okay. okay. Before they can begin, Charlotte and Felix have a surprise for Richard, which they hope will inspire him. OK. Now, the next couple of weeks are going to be a challenge for you. Yeah. So we need you to have something to motivate you, something to remember when times are getting a little bit tough. Right. So we're going to leave you to watch something. OK. And then we'll come back and have a chat with you. Okie doke. OK. okay. No Good luck, Richard. Thank you. Hi, Richard. It's Dad. Um, just thought I'd like to wish you the best of luck to get your eating somewhere back to normal. I think if you don't do that, you're going to have problems almost forever because, you know, your diet is just so unbalanced. Hello, Richard. It's Stephen. We worry that, given another five or ten years, your health is going to suffer big time, and I mean big time. You've got to think about what it's doing to you and Matt as a couple. Just imagine all the invites, the parties, the meals, and you can't go to them. You pretend you're ill or a bit off colour. The truth is you just can't sit down and eat an ordinary meal. Hi, Richard. Uh, thank you for doing this. There's lots of reasons why we'd all like you to do this, because it's, it's not just your problem, it's, it's my problem as well. I'm just worried that in a few years' time you're going to have a heart attack and I'm not going to have you anymore. And if you could sort this out, we'd be able to uh, go on holidays together. I just want you to get sorted out, really. Gosh, Richard, that was, that was very emotional for us to watch as well. I don't know what you must be experiencing. Yeah, it's horrible. Wh whose comments spoke to you the most? Matt. It's definitely Matt. Is that something you've heard from him before? Um, not put that way. Right, not that kind of directly. I know, I know he's worried, but I didn't know he was that worried. Yeah. It's just not something we've ever really yeah. talked about like, in that much detail. So it's quite new information for you? Yeah, yeah. So does that, does that inspire you? Yeah, a lot. I don't want to put him through that. Yeah. We want to use that then to start moving on to the next phase, as it were. Okay. Let's go. Charlotte and Felix begin their work with a nutritional wake-up call to shock Richard into action. Richard consumes more than three and a half times his body weight in meat every year. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, Richard, look at all this. What do you think all this represents? I, I don't know. We I... took a look at your food diary. Right. And we were quite shocked when we worked out that this is the amount of meat you're eating in a year. I... 230 kilos of meat. <laughs> That's a lot of meat to be eating in a, yeah. in a year, isn't it? That is quite bad. I would like to see someone eating 80% less than this. Right. And it's not just meat that Richard's chomping down every day. This is nearly 40 kilos of animal fat. <laughs> About half of that is pure saturated fat. So that's the fact that it will be a big heart disease risk. Yeah. I mean, it looks vile. It looks absolutely vile. I mean, I can't kind of even see why I'd want to eat it, to be honest with you. And Richard's chocolate snacks only add to the woe. Is that the amount of sugar I have in a year? That, Pretty much. Now, that, that's actually, weird. that's more shocking than the meat. Well, that's, I think that's, so, that's, actually. That's actually, that's just, that, I can't even believe that. That's just insane. Oh, I'm really glad you said that, because I find this truly shocking. It, it's, it's, that is really bad. That's, I'm really horrified by that. Health-wise, this is terrifying to yeah. me. This sugar combined with that saturated fat, that combination is sp yeah. specifically very, very dangerous, heart-wise, yeah. health-wise. Definitely need to change. Yeah. It's important that you're not in denial about what's actually yeah. going in your body. No. You want to give you a reality check. Yeah. So we've got a lot of work to do in the next four weeks. Yes. Yeah. What is it you want to achieve after the four weeks? I just want to be able to eat more normally and, and better things. And mm. it sounds a bit bizarre. I'd really like to be able to eat a pizza 
Right. It sounds ridiculous because mm. it's just everything. Like you've got cheese, herbs and spices, vegetables. Because I couldn't even attempt to eat something yeah. like, like that at the moment. The really worrying thing about Richard's diet is that combination of saturated fat that we saw and the sugar. That combination is very, very worrying for me indeed. I know I have to do something about it, but I just don't know how I'm going to do anything at the because I've not even tried anything yet. It's, um, it's going to be really, really hard. Back home in Norfolk, Richard's still overwhelmed by the day's events. What did happen then? I just spoke to everyone, I saw the film. That really upset me, oh, seeing you, oh. what you said. Oh, bless you. Sorry. <laughs> the amount of meat I eat, she said that I should be eating like 20% of that. So what are you eating tonight? I'm eating tonight, um, I think I'm a beef roll. <laughs> <laughs> Richard is an only child. His freaky eating started early. Richard's been a picky eater since he was about three. I can't think of any reason why Richard changed his mind at the age of three at all. He just suddenly wouldn't have anything and he would almost be sick if I gave it to him. There's no obvious reason that I can think of. I don't think we've ever really tried to um, push Richard too hard. Because I must admit, he is um, very stubborn. And I think if we pushed him too hard, it's just going to make makes him uh, you know, worse. He's worried about his health. He has stomach problems. He tends to end up you know, going to the loo probably rather more than um, you know, I'd expect. Whilst he would like very much to change his eating habits, it is going to be very, very difficult to turn him round, I, I think. I think it'll be hard work. I do. Today, Richard has his first session with psychologist Felix. His parents may not know what caused his freaky eating, but with a little digging, Felix hopes he can uncover the root of Richard's meat addiction. This started for you somewhere around age three? Yeah. Right. And has anyone told you? Did, did your mother tell you what was happening at age three? That... I, can't, I can't think of anything. Okay. Um... What needs to happen in order that you trust certain foods? I really don't know. I just, um, I know some, it's kind of, there's a fit. I mean, texture, I always worry about the texture of things more than, more than anything else. And certain foods, if you touch them, you'd have to wash your hands, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Which foods are those? Um, generally things that I don't like, basically. Mm. So sort of fruit and, and vegetables, um, right. you know, at the very least, I have to kind of like <laughs> do okay. that, sort of wipe my hands. Um, this is the kind of behaviour you do if you touch something dangerous, right. um, yeah. which could give you a disease, some <laughs> kind of germs, yeah. right? Yeah. It's just being inappropriately applied to something that's not actually yeah. dangerous. Well, here's, here's a question just completely randomly. What's your deepest fear? Pain. Pain? Yeah. What kind of pain? Agonising pain, sort of pain that I've it's experienced cool. most of my life, yeah. I had scans when I was a child and they said I had um, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. That's a physical pain. You can't think of anything else right. when you've got it. Um, you know, it's, it's better now than it used to be. And when was the first time you were aware of that pain? I don't ever remember not having it. What's interesting for that is, if you're having this pain mm -hmm. in the stomach area, mm -hmm. your unconscious mind may be associating that pain perhaps with food. Mm -hmm. So already may set up a sensitivity of, hey, yeah. watch what I'm eating here, because something might be causing me some kind of pain. Yeah. I've got to really monitor what goes in my mouth. Mm -hmm. That was a really useful session with Richard. If he was in that much pain as a child, it's no wonder he restricted what he put in his mouth. And now that he hopefully understands the origins of his fears, I can begin to help him move on. I suppose I never really thought of it that way, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, because I suppose if, if, if kind of like trying to, restricting what I ate would kind of be my way of trying to control, control the pain unsuccessfully, but I suppose that was the, um, the idea. The 
following morning, Richard has a meeting with Charlotte to begin the process of weaning him off meat. They've only got four weeks to do it. This morning, I've got a lot of foods for Richard to try that he hasn't actually tried in about 25 years. The object of the exercise today is really for me to test Richard's limits so that I know how we need to act with him to actually get him having a healthy diet. Now, we're here today to follow on from looking at the food you have been eating. So we've looked at what we want to move out of your diet. Mm -hmm. Clearly, we need to put things back in. This is going to involve eating foods like this in front of you. Right. How do you feel just looking at all this stuff here? Have you got a sick bag in your <laughs> <laughs> We have provisions. And look at the floor, it's lovely. <laughs> Easy clean. <laughs> what you wanted to achieve at the end of these four weeks mm -hmm. is eating a pizza. Yeah. So this is going to involve eating some cheese. No. I've, I've never, ever remember any, ever having cheese or even wanting to try it. Can you take a piece? It just looks really revolting. I'll spit it out somewhere. Yeah, of course you can. There you go. Oh. So what was the reflex that made you spit it out? Probably because I started thinking too much about it. What I want you to do is try to just move past where you've been before. This is completely new. Just try and clear your head. Right. OK, let's try those mushrooms. Oh, they just look vile. Oh, it's like a slug or something. I really don't want to touch that with my hand. It takes a painfully long 20 minutes of coaching to get a mere mushroom anywhere near his mouth. OK, let's go for it. Oh, that tastes revolting. <laughs> That's really horrible. Another 45 minutes of struggle yields limited success. A small piece of broccoli, a morsel of tomato and eventually a raspberry. How do you feel after doing that? <laughs> I can't quite believe I actually did it. Before Richard heads home, Charlotte has one parting gift. You've done really well today. Thank you. But you clearly have a phobia around certain foods. So I've put together a hamper for you. Right. That I want you to take home, open when you get home. Right. Um, this has got tasks that will help move you forward. OK. I think it's really important to remember here that although he's done amazingly today, Richard still has a really long way to go. In the grand scheme of things, taking you know that long to eat something like a mushroom is still quite a long way away from eating a normal diet every day. Charlotte can't wean Richard off meat until he's eating other things. But with a strong fear of most foods, this won't be easy. Her first step is to get him used to simply being around veg without the pressure of eating it. Each day for the next week, you're to carry with you a fruit or vegetable from the hamper. You must also hold it for at least five minutes a day. Ooh. Oh, there's something wrong about cauliflower. Oh, there's something really wrong. Why would anybody want to eat anything that smells like someone who's just broken wings? Richard takes his cauliflower to work so they can spend some quality time together. been in my trouser pocket all day. A piece of cauliflower producing a really lovely, lovely little bulge there, which looks very attractive. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> broccoli today. I had to carry broccoli around with me today and hold it for five minutes, but I actually completely forgot that it was in my hand. And actually, it was quite, 
bizarre. It felt quite nice. That's a bit wrong, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but I actually forgot I had it there and um, ended up holding it for about a quarter of an hour while I had a chat. It's 7am the next day and Richard has arranged to meet Charlotte for a doctor's appointment in London. Are you going to get up? But as usual, he's having trouble waking up. Come on, my boy. Richard, I've given you another ten minutes. Are you going to get up? Mm-mm. Yeah. I'm really worried about his health in general because it's, it's just not... I don't think it's healthy to eat the way he is. And I think... He looks pale, he doesn't really look well to me. He's put on loads of weight recently and it worries him, I know, so it's, it can't be doing him any good at all. The only thing that gets Richard up every morning is a high energy drink for breakfast, followed by his daily dose of IBS medication. I tend to have one of those, which kind of lasts sort of for the morning and then I kind of like stop, but um, if it gets up, I'll just have another one later on, so. Charlotte wants to move Richard on, but he's still at stage one, holding vegetables. She thinks a visit to the doctors may be just the medical shock he needs. Dr Pixie McKenna is a GP with a special interest in eating problems. Charlotte's brought Richard to her clinic to find out just what damage an addiction to meat could be doing to his health. What's striking from your blood test results is that you've got a very high level of bad cholesterol in your bloodstream. Of course, it's not really surprising then, looking at all the animal fat that you take in, that it's high. Yeah. You've also got a, you know, a diet that's full of salt. You've got a family history of high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. You've got a diet that's full of sugar. You've got a family history of diabetes. Mm-hmm. And all of these things together, combined with the lack of fibre, are flagging up, for me, some seriously worrying medical mm-hmm. problems that you probably aren't suffering from right now, but you are definitely going to suffer from in the future. You know, you've already got symptoms with regard to that, haven't you? Yeah, I've got irritable bowel syndrome, so I get quite a lot of stomach pain. When I look at your food diary and, and, you know, you're very good and you take your medication, but of course, you might as well be throwing that out the window because of the meat content Mm -hmm. in your diet. Yeah. Irritable bowel syndrome is a chronic disorder that affects the digestive system. A combination of stress, hormones and chemicals called neurotransmitters create muscle spasms which in turn cause abdominal cramping and pain. A red meat heavy diet lacking in fibre is hard to digest, will irritate the gut and make IBS symptoms worse. Dr Pixie wants Richard to see just what damage a lack of fibre is doing to his health. So she's produced a model of his bowels. Here we've got the combination of meat and fibre. The fibre makes, actually makes this meat pass more easily through your gut. So this is all flowing nicely through your gut. And that's all designed to go at the right pace for you to absorb all the nutrients that you should be having. The other is your diet, which involves meat, uh, let's see, meat and meat. There isn't any <laughs> fibre in here. Oh. King, now, the problem with that... You can see the saturated fat sluggish, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Sticking. Now, the problem with that is to pass that through your gut, right, you've got to use loads of pressure in your abdomen. That's going to cause problems long-term with your abdominal wall, and you get little bulges mm-hmm. called diverticulae. Food gets stuck in there, and it becomes inflamed and you get tummy pain, bleeding, mucus, bloating. I can guarantee you, on your diet at the moment, you will get that. Of course, these are all things that are not as serious as the most serious problem which you are facing because there is great evidence to show that lack of fibre in the diet increases the risk of colorectal cancer. There's no mincing of words here. He really, really needs to change his diet. This is scary stuff, and that wasn't being melodramatic in there. That much meat really is a massive disease risk. Back home in Norwich, Richard reflects on what he's been told. I'm really pleased I'm doing all this. It's just kind of like, you know, there's going to be highs and lows, and to be honest with you, tonight I'm just feeling a bit low. 
but I've got to do I want to do this and I will do it. It's a week into Richard's dietary makeover, but he's still not trying new foods. Felix has a plan to move him on. If Richard's going to have any hope of overcoming his fears, he really needs to learn to control the panic he experiences around new foods. And I've put an exercise in mind that will really show him it's a case of mind over matter. Today, Richard, we're going to show you a very practical way to start to control your fears and your phobias around things. Right. And we're going to use in a demonstration with something else. It's about channeling your mind, your discipline, your focus in a way that's going to help you get the goals you want. OK. OK. So changing rooms just through there. Okay. And I'll meet you back here in a moment. And I'd like to teach you a technique to sort of collect your energy in one area. Right. And then to apply it in a way to overcome any obstacle in front of you. Right, yeah. okay, right. I want to do a sort of slow breathing and a slow inhale, like so. Up here, I like to imagine a red hot sun. Right. Then you're going to do a very short, sharp breath as you bring this in and imagine bringing down the sun to sort of energy level. Right. Yeah? Yeah. Grab the sun and ready. A bit faster. A bit faster. Now what I like to do is imagine this stored energy you've got here, you cup it in your hand, you've got this fiery ball of red hot energy in your hand. And then the trick is to apply that energy to something useful. Right. Which we're going to do. He's going to need a very large ball of energy for this. <laughs> so do you think you can do that? Uh, probably, I'll have to give it a try. Okay, well done, Richard, that's all we want you to do. But we're going to make it a little bit easier for you. I hope so. <laughs> we're just going to do it with one board. OK. What we're learning here is to focus this energy to overcome your obstacles, mm -hmm. and then you can apply this to food. Right. The things you thought you could never do, the barriers, the obstacles, if you apply your mind to that energy, you're just going to cut through them the same way. Okay, cup that sun, that powerful energy, stand to the side of it, hold that, feel it vibrating in your hand, and the same go all the way through and shout at the top of your lungs, ready? One, two, three. Ah! Ah! It's not happening at all, is it? Ah. Okay, I think we need to gather some more energy. Shh. Gathering, get that sun. Whoa! Richard, Richard, you've just broken a board. How do you feel? Pretty good, actually. Before you came here, you didn't believe you could break this. No. If someone said to you, you're going to break a board in about 10 minutes, 20 minutes of training or something like that, you would have said, no way. Yeah. It just shows you what you can do when you apply your mind. Yeah. Now, the question is, what would it be like if you applied the same intention, the same power and energy to breaking your fears of food? Yeah. That's the plan, yeah. yeah? Realistically and rationally, it should be a lot harder to whack your hand through a couple of bits of wood than it is to kind of eat something, you know. So I just need, I just need to go the same way. Although hopefully not in the middle of a restaurant doing all the, <laughs> all the thing, because people might think I'm a bit mad. Back home, Richard can't wait to tell Matt all about his big balls of energy. It's all that junk. This is something I've been doing today. Really? What is it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I went, it was a martial arts thing, and at the end, with my hands, yes. or one hand, I did that to a piece really? of wood. Seriously, it didn't even hurt. That's going to worry me a little bit. That could be my head at some point, <laughs> if you get in a row with me. <laughs> Charlotte has set Richard his second homework task, something to give his bowels more to work on. Right, I'm, I'm making a smoothie at the moment. It feels a bit bizarre, actually. It's kind of like, um, it's still quite unusual and a bit odd, but it's not scaring me anymore touching them, which it did before. It's a good move in the right direction, anyway. It just feels a bit revolting, actually. To be fair, what's it going to do, I suppose? Right. It smells really minging, actually. It's horrible. It smells... 
Actually, to me, it smells almost dirty. Not too bad. There we go. Oh, <laughs> burping now. There we go, a pint of smoothie, that's not too bad. With his newfound confidence, Richard is inspired to carry on trying new things. Actually, that's nicer than white bread. I'm really annoyed now that I've not been having brown bread for longer. <laughs> I'm feeling quite brave, so I was in the shop today and I thought these look quite nice, blackberries. Here goes. I can't say I like the flavour yet. But I've done it, so that's good. And it's something I've not had before, so I'm pleased now. Richard's tried more new foods in the last two weeks than in the previous 25 years. Matt, however, has mixed emotions about his progress. It does make me feel a bit... I don't know, useless in a way, that over five years we haven't been able to get him to eat anything extra. And then in two weeks, he's suddenly trying all these different things and actually willing to try them. So different to... Before, he just would have flatly refused, but I think probably for the last three and a bit years, we've just... or well, I've just given up trying to get him to, to try new things, really. Richard's been coming along really, really well. He's been working hard with Felix and has really come to terms with his food phobias. Now we need to move him on a bit more and start finding some replacements for his huge saturated fat meat diet. What's your first impression here? It's the smell. Oh. It's the smell of fish. I'm, I'm really not happy at the moment at all. Really not happy. How are you feeling? It's much worse than the fruit and vegetables, much worse. I'm really not sure about this one at all. I'm feeling this about this kind of being in this proximity to it. It's not, not good at all. I just want to run out of the moment, to be honest. Can I just get a bit of fresh air quickly? I'll be back in a sec. It seems Richard isn't as far along as he originally thought. Fine. I'm going back in. Felix taught me like a technique for kind of focusing all the like the negative stuff away and that helped a bit. Yeah. I needed to be outside, I yeah. need to be outside to do it. But now Richard will have to show some real guts, not all of them his. This is salmon, very good sort of omega-3 oils. Mm -hmm. And this is something we really need you to move towards in terms of health. This is really crucial in terms, in terms of all of those heart health, diabetes issues that we talked about before. Yeah. You OK? No. How are you feeling? Not good. I just don't want to be here at all. Previously to this, you've been quite removed from the food that you're eating. This is not an exercise to just shock and upset you, mm -hmm. but it's about looking at where your barriers are and, and seeing where we have to go in terms of moving you forward. Right. Let's go outside, yeah? Yeah. Should we go? Hold well on. Richard's reaction there was really strong, which in a way is surprising because he's been doing so well with other foods and he was actually surprised at his reaction, and we really need him to move outside those really restricted barriers that he has. I'm not very happy at the moment at all. That's horrible. 
And I just felt really good last week because I was kind of achieving so many things and breaking barriers and things like that. And now I just feel a bit useless at the moment and like I'm a bit stuck. Richard's got less than two weeks until his final challenge. With his confidence now at an all-time low, Charlotte and Felix meet up to discuss where to go from here. I just wanted to let you know what happened with Richard at the fish market, because it was quite an important event. Mm. He was presented with all this raw fish, new smells, and really lost it. Right. I thought it was positive because he used his visualisation techniques that you gave him and he used them really well. So he faced a fear really well, but he now needs his confidence bringing up again. Once he has another experience of success, he'll, he'll be back on track. He's very determined, and with that kind of willpower, I think he can do anything. One of the reasons that I particularly need this one to work is mm. that I need to find an alternative to red meat for him. Oh, yeah. So he's just not that on that heavy, saturated, dense yeah. protein the whole time and find a an alternative for that. So it's not just about moving through this particular fear, it's about practically finding something for him to eat. As Charlotte's keen to keep Richard on course, she gives him his next homework task, banning all processed sugar from his diet. I suppose that means the first thing I'm going to have to do is get rid of all my chocolate, which I'd rather not do, but um, I need to do it. So uh, here we go. All I can think about is wanting to eat something like chocolate or ice cream or a cake. <laughs> and that's just all I can think about. And... Ah. <laughs> Richard's body rebels as he denies it the sugar it's become so dependent on. Just took some uh, some ibuprofen because my head is really really bad at the moment. Had a constant bad headache now for the last sort of almost two days. By day three, Richard's hit a wall. I don't know. I know I've got to do it, and I know I want to do it, but it's just really driving me insane at the moment. <laughs> I just want some sugar, really. I just want some chocolate or something like that. Better be worth it. William? He has been a bit moody because <laughs> of lack of sugar. It's been hard work for me. Yeah, you have to watch what you say. I think it's probably worse to come as, it, as time goes on. With Richard's morale now hitting rock bottom, Matt catches up with Charlotte for some tea and sympathy. It's certainly not been easy. Uh, he was very moody, very tired. And with Richard, when he gets tired, he gets moody anyway. So the two sort of smashed ah, together. Heady combination. Weren't great. When you're giving up sugar, it's quite easy to feel despondent and demotivated mm. because you're you don't know having those instantaneous quick fixes of sugar that you were used to. Yeah, he needs to see that he's achieving something. Yeah. I think if he, I think any setback will be a major setback mm. for him and he will take it, take it to heart if a single day doesn't go quite right. Yeah. Um, I think in his head it will just be a waste of a day really. So I think he needs to see that he's achieved at least something each yeah. day. So was it the same when you first met him? Yeah. Yeah. If anything, he's, he's got worse, I'd say. It's certainly not been easy um, because everything just has to sort of evolve around food, really. Mm. But I've sort of just got used to it, I think. Oh really. dear, which is, yeah, yeah. complacency so, sets in uh, and then... Yeah, I wouldn't say I was ever happy with it, but it's, um, it's just one of those things, really, that it's just a part of him, not really a part I like, but yeah. hopefully we can get it sorted. Charlotte thinks Richard's partner Matt and his best friend Stephen might be more understanding of what Richard's been going through all these years if they experience his diet firsthand. It's left to Richard to break the bad news to them. I do, I do, right, basically, Felix, a psychologist and Charlotte, nutritionist, want both of you to experience what my diet's like for three days. Three days? Yep. 
so they want oh, you to no. both basically eat what I eat, just literally meat, main it. No, that's got herbs and spices added. So to I could have a steak? Yeah, you could have steak, yeah. Well done. Not red or pink. Do you know, I've got indigestion just thinking about <laughs> it. I really have. I'm going to so miss my vegetables. What am I going to eat while I'm at work? Chocolate? Chocolate. <laughs> well, actually, sounded a bit better. <laughs> After only a day, Matt's discovering how unpleasant Richard's diet is. Good. It's going to be an exciting lamb burger sandwich. <sighs> Chewing it's bad enough. When are you going to swallow it? He was eating that, and I said, what would it be like if you had to eat like that for, like, longer or whatever? And, um... And he just said he couldn't. But the thing is, ultimately, he had, had I do now, but I didn't have the option, which he does have the option, um, to eat different things and try different things. And I just had this, this phobia, this block, whatever it is, stopping me. Maybe they'll realise how horrible it is for me and why I'm so desperate to change it. <laughs> Stephen, a local radio DJ, is realising all too quickly. Been actually force-fed chocolate biscuits and uh, lardy things for the past sort of three days, and I don't feel very healthy. I feel like I don't want to be too graphic. I feel like I need pulling through with a Christmas tree. And no one's the least bit upset to wave the diet goodbye. Oh, that's nice. Well, after three days of eating what could only be described as various flavours of lard, I feel actually very, very sickly, and I couldn't wait to get some vitamin C into me. I can't believe that Richard's put up with this sort of diet now for 25 years, just all the wonderful food and flavours that he's been missing. Cos it's just such a terrible diet. I can't explain it, really, what it's like until someone's tried it. Perfect. <laughs> Richard may now be eating a few new foods, but he has a long way to go until his final challenge of eating a pizza in just one week's time. Felix has one more trick up his sleeve that might just tackle his remaining food fears. We really need to nail this phobic reaction down today. So what I've got planned for him is to make him confront his very worst fears and teach him there's nothing he can't do with the right mental attitude. On a scale of one to 10, 10 is maximum, one is minimum, Let's call it your fear rating. Yeah. What would you rate your fear rating right now? Somewhere either 10 or above. 10 or above, yeah. so we're maxed out already. <laughs> yeah. It can only get lower. Yeah. We'd like to apply some of the principles you learn in the woodbreaking session, the martial yeah. arts session, yeah. to your fears here today. So the first thing I do is just to get back in that sort of powerful state. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do mm -hmm. is I'd like you to put all your fingers together like this. Mm -hmm and like to transfer all your fear and frustration onto the tips of your fingers. OK. How are you feeling inside at the moment? Calm. Yeah. Quite calm, yeah. But it's not so easy to be calm when something's bugging you. This is a millipede. Oh. So, scale oh. of 1 to 10. Um, right at the top again. Right at the top again. So if you want to just go into your own zone for a moment, connect back that sense of power. How does it feel to have <laughs> this on your That's really bizarre. Is this something you ever thought you could do? I never, ever, ever thought I'd be able to do ever. Right. I so mean, that's just, I mean, this is, uh, this is quite surreal, actually, because, because <laughs> I mean, normally, if anything like that was near me, I'd actually run, literally run right. away. <laughs> He's really cute, actually. He's really cute. If he can handle a bug with a thousand legs, then surely eight legs should be no problem for Richard. Oh, sorry. It's going through your mind right now. Um, that's really not good. Except that spiders are a phobia second only to fruit and veg. Just do your technique. Take your time. Do exactly what you've done so successfully before. All right. It's all right, I've got it. Going that way. It's okay. And there. What do you think of it, Richard? It's fine. 
So you are holding a tarantula. I can't believe it. So you've conquered a range of fear barriers today yeah. by applying simple techniques, focusing your intention, your will, and you see what happens. Yeah. Suddenly it becomes easy. Yeah. Just like that. You're going to see food that initially you'd think, oh no, 11 out of 10, no way. Yeah. This is not my thing. You know, apply your techniques and stay through it and then see what happens. You'll even enjoy the experience. Yeah. Well done. Thank fantastic, you. fantastic work. I'm very proud of myself at the moment. I mean, that's kind of a life-changing thing for me. But I'm terrified of so many things and I won't do so many things. And I think I actually am going to be able to. It's just going to make my life so much better. I can't even begin to describe it. Now Richard's confidence is back on track, it's up to Charlotte to push him further. Richard's last session at the fish market wasn't the success I would have liked. I really need him to start eating fish as an alternative to all that red meat. We haven't got much time, so we need to get cracking on this. What I've chosen for you today is, I think, the best way for you to start tasting. We just try the fish, very simply cooked, and maybe with some vegetables that you've started to enjoy already. Right. How are you feeling at the moment being here? And... I'm, I'm just, I'm honestly not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I want to try, obviously, yeah. but I'm not sure how I'm going to do. First up, salmon fish cake. Ah. How are you feeling about the eating of the fish cake? Ooh, quite nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And you're in control here. Do you know what that is? Yeah. That's, I think it's a spinach leaf. Yes, right. it is a spinach, spinach. Leaf. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to try that because I need to kind of get myself in the right frame of mind. Good. To... Nice well, being around some sort of herbs or spices. That, no, that is actually quite nice, whatever dressing it is. Oh, it's really garlicky. Is that garlic? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's really garlicky. No, that's quite nice. Ironically, Richard hasn't let his partner Matt have garlic in five years because he hates the smell so much. That's quite nice. Mm, it's really garlicky. You just did garlic. Oh, well, well look, we go. went in for fish and got garlic instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really good, actually. It's a great start, but will Felix's coping techniques enable Richard to eat the fish cake? Really nice. <laughs> you cracked me up. <laughs> All that is really nice. Oh. But how will he do with something that actually looks like fish? So what's this one? This halibut. Is halibut. Actually, that's really, really nice. I really like that. I've found out that I actually don't mind fish. I kind of like the flavour of garlic. I just spent all these years like avoiding anything like this, and actually, it's quite nice. It's probably the most nutritious meal you've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need you to keep this progress going. So, what I'd like you to do this week is really start taking out some of the red meat from your diet and replacing it with healthy sources of protein. Then we'll be making real progress towards changing you and increasing your health. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I started off with a salmon fish cake, and the salad it was served with had quite a bit of garlic in it, apparently, which I quite enjoyed. So, it's good he likes the garlic. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> then I had some halibut, which I had with mint peas, and that was really quite... In fact, I, I ate quite a bit of that. I really enjoyed it. So you like garlic? I like it. So he's Would not like about to try fish. some garlic bread? Maybe at some point. Yes. Tell him about the fish and he's amazed about the garlic. And the pizza is what's going to come next. That's all he's fussed about. Following Richard's recent fish success, Charlotte sent him off with a meat-free lunch alternative, a tuna sandwich. Since I liked it, It's 
ridiculous. It's a bit of fish in bread. I really wanted to enjoy this. A frustrated Richard gives up. Well, it's my final challenge tomorrow, um, eating pizza. Um, I'm, I'm quite worried, to be honest with you, because I just had a tuna sandwich today, and it was awful. I mean, it smelled like cat food. It was just hideous, and it took me about half an hour to eat half of it. And um, that's not good. If I don't do it, I'm going to... I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest. Today's the big final challenge for Richard, his dream of eating a pizza, and he's got mixed emotions. I am really looking forward to it. I'm quite excited. But on the other hand, <laughs> there's this kind of little thing at the back of my mind, and I'm kind of thinking, what if I don't like it? I suppose, in a way, this pizza sort of marks the start of a new life, in a way, that this is where we can sort of go off and eat where we both want to eat. And, go on the holidays that we both want to, to do and go around people's houses and it doesn't just have to be his decision. So, yeah, it's quite a big, sort of quite symbolic, really, a pizza. <laughs> Richard's friends know him too well to be confident of his success. I'm not quite so sure that he's going to be able to do it because uh, the, the pressure's on. Here we are in a busy restaurant, we've got the atmosphere going, he's all his friends around him. I've had a look at uh, the menu and there's loads of stuff on there that I don't think he's going to actually yeah. like. If he starts freaking out looking at this menu, then we're in trouble, or he's in trouble. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi there. Hi, yeah. Hello. How are you feeling about today? You feeling confident? I don't know. I've got my fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. I want to like it, though. Hopefully I will. Can you order? Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know what to do, I want two. Half and half, yeah. Yeah, is that all right? So, Padana. The Padana. And the Il, Pad Il Padrino. And the Il Padrino. Richard bravely orders two pizzas to try, chicken and veg, and goat's cheese with spinach and red onion. I think to everyone else it would be more about always eating a pizza, but I think to me it's more about, you know, that I've moved on, got somewhere else, and that I've achieved something I never thought I'd be able to. There's half Albedrino and the Padana. What do we do now? Do, do we all sort of sit here and look at you while you're eating? No, just eat your food. Just eat, eat your food, right. food, yeah. How do you eat pizza? Do you eat it with a knife and fork? You can yeah. eat it with a knife and fork with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> really nice actually. No, it is really nice. I'm liking the chicken. <laughs> How are you finding the cheese? Are you enjoying the cheese? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, the cheese is nice actually. It works really well. Yeah, try a bit of mine as well if you want. I'll try a little bit. But an anchovy pizza is uncharted territory. That could be anything, that face. He'll do that before he loves something or doesn't like it at all. It's really nice, this one. Compared to what it was like four weeks ago, it is, it's good to see. It's amazing to watch. There we go. That was quite nice, actually. Quite enjoyed quite nice. that. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard eating a pizza. I'm incredibly proud of him because he's... Um, managed to change the whole way in which he approaches food. And he's been cured of spiders. Uh, how this happened as a side effect, I do not know. He's clearly enjoying it, because he hasn't stopped eating yet. This is it, the start of a new life, I think, really. <laughs> I just ate a pizza, and it was really nice. And bizarrely, my most favourite one was the one that didn't have the meat on it. To see how far he's come in four weeks. It's just amazing, really. I mean, to, to think, when I started my goals, I was hoping I'd be able to eat one vegetable. <laughs> and now I'm like, yeah, whatever, that's old news. <laughs> the trouble is now I'm going to be really poor because I'm going to have to go to every restaurant in Norwich to try <laughs> different food. <laughs> uh... 
One month on and Richard's dietary revolution is still in place. Oh my God, that is gorgeous. I love it, it's just really, really nice. Going through this process with Charlotte and Felix has just completely, it's just completely changed my life. It's, you know, I'm not afraid of things anymore and yeah, it's just opened up the world to me and I can do anything. It's definitely changed our relationship. That he's trying all these different things, he's clearly healthier, so hopefully he'll be sticking around for a bit longer. And his new healthy diet has had an unexpected side effect as well. Bye -bye. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be missing those. I've been taking IBS yeah, medicine for years. There's no point anymore because I don't need them. I've had no problems, no stomach cramps, nothing. I feel completely different. I just don't feel like the same person anymore. I've you know, I've, I've lost weight and my head's clearer and I'm not scared of things. It's just kind of like someone's kidnapped me and replaced me with an imposter. <laughs> but, um, but it's a better imposter, I think, so uh, I'll stick with it. Forget the old one. Leave me alone. <laughs>